we believed we had all the answers 30 years ago. There are now more questions than answers. According to recent research, some of the first humans in the Americas came from the north coast of China. According to a new genomics research, some of the initial arrivals occurred during the last ice age and shortly thereafter, in two different migrations. People from the north coast of China were among the earliest humans to arrive in the Americas, arriving in two independent migrations during and after the last ice age, according to a new genomics research. Explorers might have arrived in the New World by a terrestrial route through an ice-free corridor, although this was most likely not the initial migration. The Kelp Highway theory is the polar opposite of the old ice-free corridor route. The findings suggest that, in addition to the previously identified ancestral sources of Native Americans in Siberia, northern coastal China acted as a genetic reservoir that contributed to the gene pool. According to the researchers, the same lineage of individuals landed in Japan during the second migration, which might help explain parallels in prehistoric arrowheads and spears found in the Americas, China, and Japan. It was originally thought that ancient Siberians, who crossed the Bering Strait between contemporary Russia and Alaska, were the only progenitors of Native Americans. More recent study has indicated that more diversified Asian origins may be linked to an ancient lineage responsible for founding. People across the Americas, including Bolivia, Brazil, Chile, Ecuador, Mexico, and California. This lineage, known as D4H, is present in mitochondrial DNA, which is only transmitted from mothers and is used to trace maternal origins. The scientists began a 10 year search for D4H, searching through 100,000 modern and 15,000 ancient DNA samples across Eurasia finally identifying 216 contemporary and 39 ancient people that belonged to the ancient lineage. They were able to recreate the D4HS origins and expansion history by studying the mutations that had acquired through time, looking at the geographic locations of the samples, and using carbon dating. Two migratory events were discovered as a result of the findings. The first occurred between 19,526,000 years ago, during the last glacial maximum when ice sheet covering was at its peak and northern China's environment was likely hostile. The second happened between 19,000 and 11,500 years ago, during the melting era. Migrations may have been prompted by rising human populations during this time period. During this second migration, scientists discovered an unexpected genetic relationship between Native Americans and Japanese people, notably the indigenous Ainu. According to the study, during the melting era, a subgroup branched out from northern coastal China to Japan, contributing to the Japanese people, a conclusion that corresponds to archaeological connections between ancient peoples in the Americas, China, and Japan. The study's strength was the quantity of samples recovered, plus corroborating evidence from Y-chromosomal DNA indicating that Native American male ancestors resided in northern China at the same period as female relatives gave researchers confidence in their conclusions. However, scholars do not know where this expansion happened in northern coastal China or what precise causes prompted these migrations. To resolve these problems, further data, particularly ancient genomes, is required. Furthermore, the world's oldest fish hooks were unearthed in a cave on Okinawa Island, off the coast of Japan, and are believed to be 23,000 years old. These fish hooks are strikingly identical to those discovered in Indonesia and California, raising an intriguing question. The fish hooks unearthed in the cave, made of sea snail shells, demonstrate the emergence of fishing technique at an earlier time than previously thought and are more widespread than previously reported. Humans are assumed to have migrated offshore to Okinawa and its sister islands some 50,000 years ago, but much about their adaptability to life there and the development of maritime technology remains unknown. Previously, it was assumed that the island's resources were insufficient to support life for extended periods of time. However, an examination of the cave discovered signs of charred eels, frogs, fish, birds, and other animals in different strata of rock, indicating human consumption. Researchers believe that this, together with other findings from their dig, demonstrates that the island has been inhabited almost continuously since 35,000 years ago. Researchers uncovered human remains, seashell pearls, and what they believe to be a grindstone in addition to fish hooks and animal corpses. According to scientists, the finding of the crab's charred remains is highly significant since it demonstrates seasonal eating patterns. 
The size of the crab fragments indicates that they were collected in the fall, when they were larger and going downstream for reproduction, which is also when crabs are at their most delicious. However, until recently, the Clovis first theory was largely regarded as the explanation for how people arrived in the Americas. The concept was that 13,500 years ago, the Beringia land bridge connected what is now Russia and Alaska, and a group of humans known as the Clovis utilized it to journey from Asia to North America. They allegedly traveled a narrow, relatively ice-free passage down the heart of the continent to the plains of central North America, where they settled and became the first Americans. Archaeological evidence of people coming considerably earlier than the Clovis has universally disproved the notion, but how those even earlier individuals came in and distributed over the Americas remains a mystery. A group of anthropologists argue in a report published in Science that the initial migration did not take place on land, but rather along the Kelp Highway. Researchers argue that early Americans traveled Pacific Rim shorelines from northern Asia via Beringia to the Americas then proceeded to move along the coasts, not through the ice-free corridor proposed by the Clovis first idea. This theory is supported by the notion that the Pacific Northwest's outer coast deglaciated around 17,000 years ago, resulting in a possible dispersal corridor rich in aquatic and terrestrial resources along the Pacific coast, with productive kelp forest and estuarine ecosystems at sea level and no major geographic barriers. The lush kelp forests that grew along the coast are thought to have supported potential food sources such as sea otters and other marine mammals, abalones, urchins, and other shellfish, numerous fish and seabirds, seaweeds, and more, making survival on the water easier for early seafarers as long as they stuck to the coasts. That's a completely different image than the one proposed by the Clovis first theory, which claims that early people crossed the Beringia Bridge and followed the corridor inland before getting to the beaches that migratory route would have looked like this. Indeed, current estimates of when people first arrived in the Americas, which place the initial migration between 26,000 and 19,000 years ago, raise the likelihood that the Beringia's terrestrial, ice-free corridor route was not even entirely navigable at the time of the first migrations. Most likely, the earliest humans moved across by a coastal migration, in which people traveled in boats along the coasts rather than crossing the land bridge or sailing across the open ocean. Archaeologists must explore shorelines that have not altered drastically in the previous 20,000 years, as well as look beneath the water if we are to truly grasp how people arrived in America. Archaeologists reported a few years ago that they discovered evidence of pre-Clovis humans by doing precisely that, unearthing human and mastodon remains in a sinkhole 30 feet beneath a river in Florida. Previously, an independent group of archaeologists discovered what are considered to be the earliest human bones discovered in the Americas in an underwater cave in Mexico, lending credence to the theory that if we want to understand how people arrived here, we need to stay close to the sea.